This week, we are going to turn our attention to a group level concept, high performing teams. This lecture has been divided into four parts. In part one, we are going to define groups and teams and take a look at some of the differences between groups and teams. One of the things that has drastically changed the way we work is the trend of using groups and teams. For our purposes in this course, a group is defined as two or more people who are connected by social ties. Some of these social ties or relationships are weak, while others are strong. Members of some groups interact frequently, while members of other groups interact only occasionally. Groups also vary in purpose, size, structure, and roles. Work groups interact primarily to share information and make decisions that help group members perform their job. Usually, members are individually held accountable for the results instead of as a group. They also tend to have random and varied skills instead of having the KSAOs that are needed for the job. Work teams are slightly different. Work teams are a type of group that create what we call positive synergy through their coordinated efforts. As individuals contribute to the team, what the team is able to produce is greater than the sum of those individual parts or contributions. If five team members put in an hour each, we would normally have five hours worth of work. But in a work team, those same five people who contribute an hour end up producing 10 hours worth of work because of how well they work together. They're able to coordinate their efforts so the whole team benefits. Also, not only are the members of work teams held accountable for their actions, but the entire group is also held accountable for what it produces. What this means is that there is usually a manager or a leader on the outside of the team who helps hold people accountable, but the members of the team are also responsible for holding each other accountable in a self-managing type of way. Members of work teams tend to have complementary skills in that they were selected or trained to do a specific role or function on the team. Working in teams requires employees to cooperate with each other, to share information, to resolve conflicts, and to put their personal interests aside for the greater good of the team. In order for teams to function properly and optimally, we have to be careful about selection, development, rewards, training, and performance measurement. All of the HR functions that we've learned about this semester are applicable to groups and teams in the workplace. But it's even more important for work teams if we want that positive synergy, if we want that high performance.